Hi everyone. You know, um, just been reading a little bit about the German idealists. It was kicked off by Kant and Schelling, Hegel, Schopenhauer. Speaking of idealism and all that good stuff, it's a beautiful sunny day. Got some nice plants behind me. We're in the corner of Piccadilly Gardens. You know, um, in no scientific rigor at all, with no scientific rigor at all, I've been asking people that work in large enclosed retail environments, uh, in Morrison supermarket, in Aldi supermarket, I ask them, and you need to ask in such a way that you don't come across as a, as bad energy or alarmist or a conspiracy theorist. You need to you need to ask in a way that makes you sound like a concerned person who actually is asking out of politeness. So I asked if um, if anyone in Aldi or Morrison's had actually suffered the coronavirus, and they said no, not a single person had confirmed coronavirus. Uh, the lady in Morrison said that two of the staff had isolated at home voluntarily because of mild cold symptoms, but maybe she or they or he had the cold. It's not that coronavirus has replaced anything. So the reason I talk about idealism, you know, we've seen those vi videos of uh, aerosolized vapors spreading in a supermarket environment from aisle to aisle and the guy getting a viral load in his face of particles. You see everyone walking around with masks. I've seen N95 respirators. I'm sure you've also seen people with like pretty high-tech army gas masks. There's other apparatus they're wearing on their faces. I'm just waiting for someone to walk around with an oxygen tank and a full ventilator, like full like, hazmat suit with like pipes leading into it. Just like Dustin Hoffman in Outbreak or uh, Matt Damon in Contagion. No, Matt Damon died. Did he get the virus? No, his wife got the virus because she was being very naughty. So, you know, we're here at a little kid's play area. There's no there's no children playing, because not allowed. But the kind of play area for adults has been the supermarket. Not everyone washes their hands. Not everyone covers their mouth when they cough. And 99% of people aren't wearing face masks. So you'd think this virus would spread very well. But this virus at the moment, I'll tell you who it's going after. And this is bizarre. It's going after black and minority ethnic people in much higher rates, four times worse, five times more infection if you're black or minority ethnic. Now, that was discussed by the liberal media, by all the media, saying, look, 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 let's not jump to conclusions. There's nothing genetically different about black or minority ethnic people. It's just that they, uh, you know, tend to poverty and discrimination, have more un unhealthiness, stress levels. They live in crowded urban environments because of your racism they're not doing so well as, as white people etc and that's fine but then a study came out yesterday and this is proper academic rigor that of medical staff doctors surgeons professors nurses in those professions which are quite clearly skilled and educated and socially socially desirable positions Black and minority ethnic people are suffering much higher rates of infection. That's for black doctors, black nurses, than their white counterparts who are doctors and nurses. Now that is bizarre. Now, could there possibly be a genetic element to this virus? I'm not saying it's man-made, but is there enough of a difference between human beings that certain populations can be affected more? You know, if this virus came from the horseshoe bat, via the pangolin, and this is all in Asia, China, China area, that whole part, surely Asian people would be affected more. Surely, doesn't make any sense. This is Charlie Veach, not a scientist, signing out from Piccadilly Gardens.